Now, this next part of the question, the last part of the question, is the best part. Because it really requires you to think. A lot of this is somewhat mindless, like you're differentiating or you're integrating, you're substituting values in, that's all pretty straightforward. Read this last part with me and read it carefully. It's all about interpreting this in terms of all this. It says, suppose that it's necessary to let out a total of 300 cubic meters from the tank. How long should the tap be left fully on before gradually turning it off? So here's the idea, right? Put your pens down for a second. You've got the tank of water, okay? And it starts at, what did we say it started at? 520, okay, so let's just call that 520 cubic meters, okay? Now, we can watch it, the turf turns on and water starts to flow out, and if we want to release 300 cubic meters, then where we want to stop is at, well on this scale, I don't know, something like that. We want there to be 220 cubic meters left at the end, does that make sense? But of course, you cannot wait until you see the water line pass that mark, because why not? Why can't you wait until that point? Because then you've actually released too much, because once you've seen that, oh, I better start turning this thing off now, but I can't do it instantly. That was the whole premise of the question, right? So therefore, I have to slow down, do that. I actually have to stop the water earlier than when it hits 220. When do I need to stop it? Yeah, I need to stop it when I hit 240, right? Uh, or in other words, rather than having released 300, I want to release 280, okay? That's because as I then go and turn off the tap, this amount of water will also make it out while I'm turning off the tap. Does that make sense? Okay. So here's the way I'm going to... Yes? I just like, I like, you make minus 2 plus 1 on 10 T equals 280? Ah, okay, so... This is interesting, right? Because the first thing you might think is, it's not 280, I want the volume to end up as 240, don't I? And then I start to shut off. But there becomes a problem, right? Um, don't, don't write this down. Please don't write this down, you'll see why in a second. Let's suppose I try and solve, where's my volume function? Uh, here it is, here's my volume function, okay? So I'm just gonna start to take this as my assumption, right? Uh, minus 2t squared, sorry, minus 2t plus t squared on 20 plus 520. I wanted it to be equal to what again? I wanted to get to 240. 240. Okay, so I'm just going to try and solve this and see what happens. Uh, the first thing I notice is, let's, this is a quadratic, let's get the, the right term at the front. This is here. What's the constant? 280. Right. Okay, and just, just hold on for a second, stay with me. This is a bit messy. I don't like these fractions and all that kind of thing. So I'm gonna multiply through by 20. There's no reason why I can't do that. The right hand side zero. So I'm gonna get this. Uh, what's that? 5,600. Okay, now just pause for a second. I'm not asking you to solve this. I just want you to think about this equation and what your spider sense tells you, right? Now we know, like if you, if you graph this, Okay, if you graph this, you're like, okay, I've got my roots here and here. Zero and 40, yeah, is that okay? And then what does this do? This lifts you up, it lifts you up thousands of units into the air, right? So our quadratic, which looks, used to look like this, right? Is now, oh, I don't know, somewhere up here. And we apparently want it to be equal to zero. I don't like our chances, right? If that's, if that's not enough for you, you just have a look at this and you say, well, I can work out whether I'm gonna get a solution or not, like without this guesswork, I just think about the discriminant. Um, B squared, take away four AC, uh-oh. <laughs> that's gonna be so negative, it's not even funny. This has no solution, okay? Well, now this is the flow rate, right? So you want it to be equal to, well, what do you want it to be equal to? Now, I'm going to ask you to come back to the question. Come back. Come back. It says, it's necessary to let out a total of 300 meters cubed from the tank. How long should the tap be left fully on? All this time, we've actually been answering the wrong question. There's nothing to do with this at the moment, right? Remember, let's write it down this way. If we're going to lose 20 cubic meters right at the very end as we turn off the tap. Okay, so I'm actually going to write this down, wrong color. And maybe you want to do this with me. Right? Part A, 
20 cubic meters are released as the tap is turned off, as I'm slowly turning. Okay? So as a consequence, I want 280 cubic meters to be released not when the tap is being turned off, like when the tap is fully on, right? But hold on a second. When the tap is fully on, I know exactly how much water is leaving the tank every second. It was the first question I answered, right? Part A, water's flowing out at two cubic meters per second. At time zero, when the tap is fully on. So therefore, how many seconds is it gonna take if you're losing two oh, cubic meters every God. second? Therefore, One. it takes 280 divided by two, that's every second, I'm losing two cubic meters, seconds to empty, or to lose, release maybe, is a better word, release. Right, does that make sense? So you see how like, it's so easy to just, oh, go to the equation, start solving something, no, 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 no. Think first, solve second, right? It's easy to go to equations and start putting numbers in, right? But this is the difference between someone who understands, who looks carefully and, and does your planning before you start working out what's going on. And it's just division, no calculus involved. You've already worked out the full rate. So therefore, uh, 140 seconds, what's that? Two minutes and 20 seconds. Well, I should say the tap should be, to take the exact wording of the question, um, I think they would say the tap is fully on for two minutes, 20 seconds, okay? So now you have the scenario in your head, right? You turn it on, off it goes, two minutes and 20 seconds pass, and this amount of water gets released in that time. And then you start to turn the tap. And you turn it slowly and slowly, and eventually that 280 just comes up to 300 and then at that point it's fully off, okay? So this is why I picked this out as an example, right? It's way too easy to just um, treat the algebra as everything, right? But it's all about how you use the algebra and like what numbers need to be combined and in what ways. Read the questions super, super carefully, right? It's all about interpreting that properly. That's really what this topic is about, okay? Does anyone have any questions on that? Does it seem clear? I'm sorry I led you down a bit of a rabbit hole. I had to, so that you can see it's not so simple as just, oh, the equations will tell me. The equations will not tell you everything. You need to use them carefully, okay? And that's your job, not the equations job.